Hey guys, Michael Corsentino. Welcome to this month's companion video to my Shutter Magazine lighting column. Uh, this month we're looking at creating dramatic fashion lighting. Um, I wanted to walk you through some of the tools and techniques and the process that I use to create dramatic lighting and I wanted to talk to you specifically about dramatic lighting and kind of what defines dramatic lighting, what constitutes it, um, and the kind of mental roadmap that you want to take when you're getting there. One of the things that I see often in people who are just kind of starting out with lighting, and some people frankly have been doing it for a while, is that their lighting looks kind of flat. Um, now you can do a lot of great things with flat lighting, but to me it's not very dramatic lighting, uh, and that's really what this uh, tutorial is all about. This month's article is all about. So here you can see the final image and uh, that I created. This was my original concept. Uh, so we're going to start out very bare bones and we're going to build gradually and take you through about uh, 10 steps or so uh, to, to finally get to this image. And I just want to kind of show you how um, the various steps that you can take and the ways again that you want to think about lighting because I think it's more important for me to show you to explain the, the whys, the reasons behind what I'm doing, rather than just to show you, hey, here's a diagram and here's the finished image and this is how I did it. I think that it's important. It's kind of teach a man to fish rather than give a man a fish kind of mentality. So hopefully by explaining some of the reasons behind this, it'll jumpstart your uh, creative process and get you uh, created, excited about shadows and how to create them and some of the tools that you can use to create more dramatically lit images. Um, so let's get rid of the finish and we'll start off here with our first lighting setup and that is just using one strobe, okay, really simple. You can do it, again, I say this every month, you can do a ton using one light, um, but it all depends what you do with that one light. Here we're using it very flat, we've got it, uh, we've got it placed right here, right at camera position, dead center at my camera, above my camera a little bit, and angled down a little bit. Uh, so you could, that's why there's this little shadow under the chin, but basically, and the shadow behind the model, but essentially there is very little in the way of shadow or modeling on the, uh, on the subject's face, right? So it creates a very flat look. We don't have a lot of volume, we don't have a lot of structure, uh, we don't have a lot of dimension to the subject because she is lit head on, right? Um, and there are, again, circumstances, I don't want to say never, ne never say never, but there are circumstances when you will use flat lighting, albeit typically with a modifier like a, a ring flash or some sort of a, a octobank, a beauty dish, etc. Um, usually in combination with other tools. But in any event, for the purposes of this, uh, in, in any eventuality, if what I should say is that it does create a very flat look, and that's not what we're talking about. No, we're talking about adding drama, and for my money, uh, when you're talking about drama, you're talking about shadow, right? So let's move on to our second look. Uh, and that is going to be this one. Now what we've done here is I've simply taken this flash. Again, it's a bare bulb strobe, just like we had in the first look. No modifier on it, because again, modifiers are going to play a role in how we create this kind of light. Uh, so I wanted to start with no modifier and we're going to slowly build, but one of the first things that we want to do in our journey toward dramatic lighting is to add direction to our light, okay? And this will hold true throughout the rest of our uh, images, throughout the rest of the steps that we're going to take, okay? So what I've done right away is I've taken the image, I've taken the, the light rather, which was here, dead center, and I've moved it over to here, camera right, okay? And I've given it uh, direction by doing that. I've, I've introduced shadow by doing that. Uh, it's really kind of up here and pointed down. Uh, it's at about 45 degrees to the side and 45 degrees down. Uh, that kind of usual suspect positioning. Uh, but what it does is it gives us this nice shadow here, kind of a Rembrandt looking lighting pattern. It creates lots of shadow here. And you can see here, if, you, if you're contrasting the first image and this image, it, they're vastly different. Okay, now we have shape, we have dimension, we have a model that looks like she's sculpted rather than flat. All right, and that's simply by just moving our light. You can do it either left or right, and the further to the side that you move it, the more shadow and dimension you're going to have. All right, so that's step number two. So let's move on to our next iteration. And what we're doing here 
is adding this reflector. Okay, we're still working with one strobe. We still have it positioned exactly like we had it in the last slide, which is camera right, 45 degrees over, 45 degrees angle down, uh, positioned slightly above the model. So nothing has changed except all we've done is we've added in this reflector. It's a standard seven inch reflector. Uh, they're available in all, across all sorts of brands. So uh, don't think that you can't get one of these, they're whatever brand you have. Um, so again, we've got the same kind of light pattern, but the light, the quality of the light has now been modified. The background is much brighter. The shadows are a little bit more intense. We've got more specular highlights on the model. So just a different quality of light, a contrasty, a more punchy light, uh, a little deeper light. Shadows are a little deeper. Transitions are a little harder. Um, and we've got a more confined light because the edges of this modifier are now controlling where that light is spilling. So you can see here that there's a bright center core here, and then things are kind of starting to fall off here. All right. So modification. Modifiers are going to play a huge role in creating your light, either soft or hard. Okay. So you definitely want to think about your choice of modifier. Next up, I wanted to throw in an interesting curveball here. Uh, we're sort of deviating from the path, but I wanted to talk about this tool because it is a really amazing tool. It's called the Grid Spot. It allows you to focus the light and create various shapes uh, using these tabs here. You can create all sorts of shapes from circular to shafts and all sorts of stuff, and you can focus them from spot uh, to uh, to um, wide. I'm, I'm losing the word here, but you, you guys know what I mean. Uh, from soft to very sharp edges. Um, and I've gotten a very sharp edge here by focusing the light. So this is called the grid spot. Uh, again, if you're looking for dramatic lighting, this is an amazing tool. I picked this up used on eBay. Again, all manufacturers, uh, pretty much top manufacturers, you know, Ellen Chrome, Profoto, uh, Bowens, I believe, they make grid spots. So uh, definitely worth checking out. Remember, all this stuff is uh, you can be rented, okay, as well. So you don't have to think that you have to go out and buy all this stuff. You can definitely rent as well or find a studio that has one and check them out. But th this is a great tool for creating dramatic lighting. All right, we're going to move back to reflector, but we're going to change the reflector now. Uh, again, we're working with a white background. I had to say, I want to say that up front. This everything we're going to work with is a white background, and eventually we're going to start talking about color and tone and how those are going to impact uh, our final results as well. But for, for right now, we're on a white background. I want to show you how you can change a white background uh, just by using a modifier and grids and other tools. So now we've switched up to um, a modifier or reflector called the uh, Mola Rayo, and this is a very deep conical reflector with a silver interior. And you can see here, again, like I said before, the Rayo positioned exactly this, well actually it's, it's positioned the same, but it's closer, okay? So it's 45 degrees to the side, 45 degree angle down, but it's much closer. But previously we are about 10 feet away, uh, with uh, up until this particular step. Now we're probably about four feet away, all right? So we've got a much, different quality of light just because of this modifier. All right, It's channeled the light, it's given us a much more focused light, it's given us much harder shadows as you can see all in here, given us a punchy specular look due to its silver interior. And again, uh, it is creating some fall off here because you know the edge of this modifier is controlling the spill of that light. It's kind of confining it to the center core of light which we have all here, right? And then of course there's going to be fall off, right? So I love this modifier, great modifier, uh, definitely worth checking out if you're into a dramatic kind of punchy look. It can also create a really soft look, oddly enough, it's a very interesting modifier, but here we're using it to create a kind of a punchy, uh, dramatic look, okay? So next thing that we're going to do is we're going to move back to the seven inch reflector and we're going to put a grid in there. Now again, I talked about white backdrops and how you can change the look of a backdrop with a modifier. Now this is exactly the same position that we were in in the last setup. All that I've done is I've swapped out the Rayo for a 7 inch reflector and I've popped in a 10 degree grid spot. And you can see here how the background now looks completely different. Right? It's gone from very bright white background to now a kind of black and dove gray background. Right? So here we've got the modifier, we've got the 10 degree grid spot, and a white backdrop. And this is the effect that we're able to create. The quality of light, of course, is also very different. We've got very, very deep shadows. It's a nice specular look here, Very obviously very dramatic look. That's what we're going for. 
uh, and then our circle has gotten tighter uh, so that we have all this fall off happening uh, here and here and then a center core of light kind of all there lighting up our model and for this fall off here. Now uh, later on what I'll do is I'll bring in a strip box and put it here underneath our, um, uh, our underneath our reflector to light up the uh, subject's clothes here and here. Now you can go ahead and do that or the legs. So sometimes you want to stack two lights, the key light and the fill light. Uh, I, I believe I do that later on. Okay, so that's the uh, white background with uh, reflector and a 10 degree grid spot. Next up, we're using a gray background. Same exact lights. Uh, here I have done what I talked about before. I've added in this Rotolux medium softbox. Uh, I put that here and that is underneath the key light. You can see here that now we have more illumination all the way across here. And that's helping us so that this all doesn't get lost because black on black or gray can, you know, it just disappears. Uh, we've got that same reflector, 10 degree grid spot. That's here. And that is lighting up our model and giving us this cool kind of light. So what's happened is uh, we've created this, we've just swapped out the background as well. We're using a gray background and now we've got a much different, more dramatic quality of light. So again, here tone starts to play a role in heightening that drama, right? Uh, and then we have to make certain adjustments so that things do, so that the clothing doesn't do, doesn't just disappear on us, which is where we're using this fill light to kind of give us some extra illumination on the body of our subject. All right. Next up, we've switched to a black background. So everything again is exactly the same, but we're using a black background. And you can see here that now we've got a truly dynamic you know, dramatic kind of look. Uh, I love you shooting on black when it comes to dramatic look, uh, but you, there are considerations that you have to take into effect in order to get the right kind of look. Uh, so I'm bringing all of those things to bear here. Uh, I am using that seven inch reflector like we were in the last, the 10 inch grid spot, uh, the black background, and also I've changed to two of these medium, uh, actually two Rotolux softboxes, one medium, and that is here back a little further actually, but I'm lighting up all of the model's left side, camera left side, opposite the key light. I'm not a very good illustrator as you can see. Uh, and then I've got another one underneath the key light, right here. Another great illustration. Uh, and that is lighting up this side of the model, right? Uh, and nothing else has changed. Key light's exactly the same, 10 degree grid, We've just changed the black to the black background, and that's given us this really heightened kind of uh, cool look that's dialed in. Now, this alone would be a, a really cool portrait. Uh, you know, I think it would work as a dramatic portrait, as a final, but it wasn't my initial, uh, my final concept that I had in mind. So let's take a look at how we started to build that. All right, so for that one, we kept the black background. Uh, I added a grid uh, to the... Um, to the strip box, right? I'm using a large strip box here, a large Ellen Chrome strip box, and I added a light tools grid. If you shoot Ellen Chrome, you'll need light tools grids. Ellen Chrome doesn't have a whole lot of grids in their um, line, and, and light tools makes fantastic grids. So if you've been on the search for Ellen Chrome grids, definitely check them out. They're amazing. They come with an internal easy pop-up pop system and stuff so that there's no sagging, and they're really, really well made. Um, so anyway, I'm using this strip box here and I'm using that uh, as my key light, camera right, and that's lighting up, providing all the illumination here. And then I've got two uh, bare flashes, two bare strobes behind the model. And those are using Roscoe Primary Blue Gel, right? If you're looking for Roscoe, if you're looking for gels, Roscoe's great. Uh, they've got some cool gel packs uh, that I used for this. I taped them on here. One uh, important note, if you're going to attempt something like this, um, what I did was I uh, put gaff tape on my C-stands all the way down up, and I should have by all rights done it here because you can see if you don't, you're going you're gonna to have a lot of retouching to do. And But I did the bulk of it, um, but I didn't do it here. It didn't take me that long to retouch it. But you know, taping and masking your stands will just help you if you're going to illuminate uh, toward the camera. Um, 
and I put the gels, the, the primary blue gels, on the uh, on the lightheads, on the strobes. Also, one other thing is if you're going to use gels on your strobes, anywhere on your strobes, what you want to do is make sure to turn off your modeling light or your gels are going to melt onto your strobes really quickly and that makes nobody, nobody's happy about that. So definitely look out for that. Okay, one other note. Inside this uh, strip box, You've got a diffusion panel, uh, and then, um, well, you've got the diffusion panel on the outside, then you've got an internal baffle, right? And then behind that, of course, is the strobe. So I have another primary blue gel over that strobe, kind of half over it. It's kind of hanging there. I take gaff taped it. I didn't tape the entire front of the softbox with gel because it would have been too blue. I didn't want that much blue. I wanted the, the um, I wanted the most, I wanted white light, I wanted a predominantly white light, but not entirely white light. I still wanted a hint of blue, but I didn't want it to be completely overwhelmed with blue. And I'll show you that because I experimented with it to see what it would look like if it was entirely covered, uh, even without covering the entire face, just covering the entire strobe gave it was too much blue. All right, so let's take a look at that next. Again, half covered with blue gave me this, all right? So let's turn this off and go here. All right, here's the effect with fully gelled with blue. Okay, so that entire strobe head here is wrapped in blue gel, right? And that's the effect that I'm getting here. And it was just too much blue for me uh, for this particular, for, for what I had in mind, right? Also, fog. I've uh, introduced fog using a Roscoe vapor machine, um, and that. To, they're tricky to take a little while to get the hang of until you, of course, once you know how to use them, they're great and easy. Um, but it takes a minute, they have a timer and the amount, and you know, you have to kind of get it all dialed in uh, and then figure out how to exactly position it to get the effect that you want. So um, this was looking good. Uh, I think in the, in the article I show you one version where uh, it wasn't quite enough fog yet. <clears throat> Excuse me. But this one is uh, pretty much dialed into where I want it. Again, but with too much blue, so I scaled that back. I took that uh, filter and again created used half of it. Okay, covered half the strobe with it. All right, so here is our final look. Uh, this is pretty much uh, what I started shooting with for my final images. So we've got the fog machine. We've got our primary blue gels, two on the back and one half gelled on the key light. Um, our key light is a strip box with a. I believe it was a 30 degree light tools soft egg crate grid. And that gives us this cool look, very dramatic, very cool. And I did do some things in post to kind of amp up the look, add back some contrast. And here is the final, final edit. Uh, so that's dramatic lighting, guys. That's that's my version of it anyway. I hope that this has inspired you to try some of these effects. Definitely uh, one of the main things you can do is just introduce some angle, some direction to your light. That right away is going to add drama to your images. Until next time, this has been Michael Corsentino. I will see you guys next month.